Hello my dear friends and welcome to my channel. Don't forget to make yourself a cup of tea, because today we have very interesting stories, and one of them is a story about 8-year-old OP and her terrible mother who has hidden her personality and secretly hurt her little daughter. Subscribe if you haven't and I hope you'll enjoy it. Backstory, I have to go back a bit for that. In April 2018 it was the last day we had freezing temperatures and heavy snow. On that day on my way home from work I had an accident with my 2006 Ford Focus. I crashed into a driver in front of me because I underestimated the frozen route. Don't worry neither I nor the driver I crashed into were harmed in any way. This car had a scratch in the back bumper while my car's front bumper broke at the side. Police were called, we exchanged information and that was the end of it. So I had to bring my car to the mechanic again, and I had enough of it, I owned the car for almost two year, and had to make several repairs already. So I thought whatever and tried to get a new car. I brought my focus to a friend of mine, who made a little extra by repairing cars. The co-worker of mine gave me a ride to work until I had a new car, I paid my share for the gas. Now to the present. Around a month ago I found a new car, finally. A car dealer had a deal where they would sell cars with daily admission for 10,000 euros less than the original price. After a short time thinking and some dealing with my bank account manager, I am now the owner of an 2018 Ford Focus Board Edition, completely black except for the roof and the top half of the side mirrors which were red. The car is great and when I bought it he only had around 15 miles. Sorry for the long backstory, onto the actual encounter. After I bought the new car, I put my old Focus up for sale on an app called Autoscout24, where everyone can sell their cars for how much they want for it, of course depending on age, miles etc. Most of the damage was fixed, me and my SO cleaned it inside and outside, but I knew I couldn't get much for it. So I put the base price at 350 euros with the option of bargaining. In my first post I told you that I live in the old town of my home city. So in order to not occupy parking spaces and to avoid parking tickets, I parked my car at my grandma's place in the driveway. Her house is in the countryside so it won't bother anyone, and I could take good pictures for the ad. Two days ago while I was at work I got a call from an unknown number. The guy left a message that he wanted to take a look at the car. I called him back, told him where the car was, and that we could meet there after my shift was finished. He agreed. After I'm done with my shift I drove immediately to my grandma's place to wait for him. Past. ED. Entitled dad, ES. Entitled son, around 17 or 18, me. Master of disaster, GM. Grandma. Me and ED agreed on meeting 1530. I was there early, parked next to my old focus, went inside to tell my grandma I sold the car today and checked if everything was still alright. ED and ES arrive half an hour later than agreed, explaining the place was hard to find. I shrugged it off because I could tell they were not from around here. So me and ED take a look around the car, I explain everything to him, fix damages etc, he asks me about how many miles, horsepower etc the usual stuff. While I was talking with ED I noticed that ES wasn't paying any attention. The car was supposed for ES according to ED. ES rather likes to take a look at my new focus instead. Yes. Damn that's a nice ride. Me. Thanks. Yes. Can I take a ride? Now I'm very picky if it's about my new car, but who wouldn't and by the way I had a feeling he didn't have his driver's license for very long. Me. Sorry, not happening, I just got the car a few weeks ago. Ed. Come on, let the boy have a little fun. Me. Sorry, still not happening, and by the way we were talking about my 2006 Focus, not my new one. B.S. But I like this car. E.D. You heard him, he likes this one, so how about you sell us this one instead? Me. Yeah right and how much would you pay me anyway? E.D. Well the ad said 350 euros. Me. Yes, for the 2006 Ford Focus. E.D. Fine, I'll give you 3000 euros for the new one. Me. Are you serious? I paid 30,000 euros for that car. 30,000 euros was the original price, but with a deal I got it for 20,000 euros. ED. Well you drove the car for a while, and that's a price drop. Me. Sorry this is leading nowhere, we are done. I turned to my car, pulled the key out of my pockets and just wanted to go home. BS. Dad, I want the car. ED grabs me by the arm. You heard him, hand over the keys. 
Now I'm a little heavy build, but I'm still strong enough to fight if I have to. Me. I said no, and I would recommend you let me go now. While my eyes were staring at ED, ES snatched the keys from my hand, unlocked the car and jumped in. I immediately freed myself from ED and ran to the driver's door of my car. The little idiot locked the door so I couldn't get inside. So I did the only thing I could and stood behind my car to prevent him from leaving. he could only back out of the driveway. Me. Tell your kid to get out of the car before I call the police. In the commotion my grandma came outside. GM. What's going on? Me. Grandma, go inside and call the police they try to steal my. I couldn't finish my sentence because ED shoved me aside so ES could drive away. Well he surprised me, I hit the ground hard and they drove off in my car while leaving their car behind. I immediately grabbed my phone and called the police. As I mentioned in the backstory my new focus was completely black, except for the roof and the top of the side mirrors which were red, which means that car stood out among the most which are around our home city. It took the police 10 minutes to arrive. One of the officers took my and my grandma's statement, while the other one radiated his colleagues from the neighboring towns, the description and license plate of my car. About an hour later ED and ES came back to the house with my car. The two policemen jumped them at sight, pulled them out of the car and cuffed them. ED tried to talk him and his son out of the situation by telling the police they only did a test drive. The police had none of their bullcrap and escorted them away. They asked me if I wanted to press charges and I agreed. More importantly, I checked my car for damages. It had around 20 miles more than before and I found ash and cigarette buns in my backseat. I still have to wait for a court date. This crazy family is a piece of work. How did they expect this to work? Like they stole OP's car and they expected to not get sued. I wonder what is going on inside their heads. My mother is not a good person, and when thinking of ways to describe her, a few names come to mind. Annie Wilkes from Misery and Margaret White from Carrie, just to name a few, Stephen King depicted my mother quite nicely in those books. Since a very early age my mother was mentally and physically abusive towards me and my older brother, who's autistic. This is a story of one of those occasions, of which there were many. I think I was about eight at the time. My younger sister was mum's golden child. She lived up to all of mother dearest's high expectations and liked doing everything that our mum did. Like riding horses. I was never interested in doing any of it, probably because of her poor treatment towards me for most of my childhood. My mum and dad had separated when I was very young, but they were civil around each other for the benefit of me and my siblings. At this point my dad and family members on my dad's side didn't know the things my mum did to me and my brother. I can remember this day so vividly. We were visiting my aunt and her husband, my dad's sister, who lived on a farm. They were all interested in riding horses, but knew that I wasn't, which was never an issue to them. My mother on the other hand wasn't so understanding. My sister, five at the time, was riding around on a Shetland pony with my uncle walking beside her, and I was sitting on the veranda watching her. My brother had walked off down the driveway a few hours before this so was nowhere in sight, he's high-functioning autistic and was fine to be on his own. He was 11, and this was in a small and safe rural town. While sitting and watching, my mother walked up to me. My dad was with my aunt on the other side of the farm. Mom. Why won't you come and ride with your sister? Me. Because I don't want to. Mum. Don't be a spoiled brat. Get up off your lazy butt now. Me. Mum you know I don't like riding horses and I'm not good at it. Please don't make me. Mum. Getting visibly angry, get up now you lazy little crap. She grabbed me by my wrist and pulled me hard and fast forward off the chair. I felt a sharp pain in my wrist as she pulled and I screamed out in pain. Me. Mum. You're hurting me. Stop. My wrist. Mum. Stop being a sook and get up. My wrist hurt so bad and began to throb in pain, but whenever I said something about it, Mum just accused me of faking it to get out of doing things. She walked me over to where my dad and aunt were, with my mum dragging me by my now broken wrist, and when we got there, my dad noticed I was crying. Dad. What's wrong? Are you okay? Mum. Squeezing my wrist to keep me from saying anything, she's fine. She wants to ride a horse. Me. No, I don't, I was cut off, mum. Yes you do. You want to ride the big horse, don't you? All of my objections were ignored by my mum, and she made my dad help me onto a horse, bareback. 
the big horse was a Clydesdale. Anyone who knows about horses will know that a Clydesdale is far too big for an average inexperienced horse rider, let alone an eight-year-old girl. And this horse was easily spooked, so having a new person on his back that didn't know what they were doing was enough to spook him. He jerked forward quickly and bucked me off. I landed in the grass with my hands taking most of the impact, which made the pain in my wrist even worse. The impact wasn't hard enough to break my wrist, but it was already broken before I'd gotten onto the horse. My mum came rushing over to me to see if I was okay. I was crying in pain and grasping onto my wrist. Mum. Doing her best fake concerned mother act, oh, you poor thing. Are you okay? Let me help you up. Me. My wrist. It hurts. Mum. Oh no. You must have broken it when you fell. Dad took me to the hospital and my wrist was broken. When I told dad that mum broke my wrist he didn't believe me. Not because he was a neglectful parent, but because he saw me fall onto my hands, so he put two and two together. Most of my cries for help as a child fell on deaf ears. I spent the next eight weeks with my wrist in a cast which made school hard, as I couldn't hold a pen, it was my right wrist and I'm right-handed. I want to say that this was the worst thing my mother has done to me, but I'm sad to say it isn't. I'm no longer in contact with her, and my life is better without her in it. Edit. There seems to be a misunderstanding about my father enabling my mother so I want to clarify. He didn't know what she was like back then. My mother was very good at covering her tracks and making what she did look like accidents. It wasn't until many years after this that he began to see who she really is. Oh my god, that's not how parenting works. It's horrible to realize OP's own mother did to her 8-year-old daughter just because daughter didn't want to do what her mom says. Bit of backstory, I am mildly colorblind, protonopia, I think, and I have had this my whole life. I mostly struggle with telling the difference between pink and yellow, but there are more colors out there I can't see. This all started when the primary school my younger brother, 11 at the time, and not colorblind, was putting on a party fair, I don't remember what for, but I think it had something to do with fair trade. Now my mother made me cut out some paper chains along with other people in the gym to prepare for the fair. More and more people left until it got to the point where it was just me and another kid and an old gentleman at the back, remember this part, and this kid was professional at making paper chains. I struggled to keep up, I was sitting closer to the piles of paper than he was, when the kid ran out of paper, he kindly asked me to pass some of the yellow paper. I pulled some pink paper out of the pile, thinking it was yellow, and he looked at me confused, so I responded with wait is this pink or yellow. And he responded pink and led me to the yellow paper. I apologized and told him I was colorblind, and he started to ask questions, they were questions of curiosity, such as do you see red or what color is that? Then enters EM. The EM in this case was the kid's mother, and had entered the gym looking for the kid's father, and overheard us talking about my colorblindness. The EM first said. Blank sweetie, please keep your distance, I don't want you to become colorblind as well. Me being utterly confused replied with excuse me, you can't catch color blindness from another person. The EM then proceeded to give me bullcrap looks and then walked out of the gym with her son in tow. I'd say about 5 minutes later she returned with the head of the department and said yup, he's the one. The head then approached me and said are you the one causing disturbance down here? Emmy, um no, what do you mean, this woman thinks my color blindness is contagious and that I'm going to give it to her son the head of course did not believe me, being a 14 year old at the time who slacked off a lot. My mother overheard the conversation and walked in and started to defend me until the EM yelled. Color blindness is contagious and you're going to give it to everyone here if you don't leave. Me and my mom looked at her, utterly shocked, and the head was unaware on whose side she was on, until she said alright Mrs. E.M. and you, me, I'm going to ask you both to leave as you're both making a disturbance here. But then, the old gentleman at the back of the gym stood up and said. There is no disturbance, Mrs. E.M. is the only one harassing anybody here before sitting back down again. Having heard his side, the head banned the EM from the school fair, don't worry about the kid though, he got to go with his dad, I saw the EM drive out of the school, and I haven't seen her since. Also, as it turns out, the old gentleman was the school's former headmaster. I think it's okay to protect your child, but that's too much. And to be honest, I'm not really sure she was protecting her child, maybe she was really afraid of getting color blindness herself. This happened when I was at the gym today. Little backstory. 
Basically my gym also has a large swimming pool attached to it and both the gym and swimming pool share a locker room. The gym is for ages 16 plus, but the swimming pool has no age limit so long as people under the age of 16 have a parent guardian present. Past. Me. Me. K. Kid. E.M. Entitled mother. G.G. Gym guy. I had just finished my usual two and a half hour session in the gym. I was in the changing room and I had my shirt off as I was rummaging through my gym bag for some deodorant and a clean shirt. If you had read my last post you'd know I had an abusive mother when I was a kid. I've got a scar on my side from where my mom had hit me with a broken bottle while I was trying to protect my sister. This was nearly 11 years ago. While it's mostly faded there is still a jagged line that is still visible as it was quite a deep wound. I hear the door open and I see a middle-aged woman walk into the men's changing room. My first thought is perhaps she's made a mistake, but no. She just stands by the door, looking at a kid probably around 13 or 14 years old. The kid looks like he's about to die of embarrassment. Hey, mum, just go. I'll be out when I'm ready. EM, no darling, I don't trust these places. They can be dangerous men lurking here. God only knows why your father let you come here. Me, sorry to interrupt, but this is the men's changing room, you really shouldn't be here. GG, yeah, some of us are trying to get changed here. Sod off lady. It's at this point she sees my scar, as I still haven't put my clean shirt on. EM. You there, you must cover up that disgusting scar. It doesn't make you look big or cool. You shouldn't be proud of a mark like that as it makes you look ugly, and no one is attracted to it. Before I can even utter a single word or think of a sarcastic comeback, she grabs her son and walks out. Me and the other guys exchange a what the hell look and have a laugh. I say my goodbyes and leave. I'm meeting my fiancé for dinner and wedding talk, then I'm on a night shift. I just couldn't believe that happened, it's so not normal. I cannot understand that overprotective parents who are sure their baby will need protection for the rest of their lives. Well guys, that's it for today. If you end up enjoying this video please consider subscribing, and if you missed the last episode on the channel I'm gonna link it right here, the story about a young talented OP, her best friend and friend's mother, who tried to steal OP's iPad for what she'd done to her precious son. Check this out if you haven't, and I'll see you in my next video.